Hey guys, what's up? What do you mean by Z transforms? Well, my name is Rishi Ranju and welcome to the Backwards Engineering community where I make it really easy for you. So, let us ask yourself that obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term Z transforms? Well, what went out? So, till now, in the case of control systems, we saw something referred to as Laplace transform. So, a Laplace transform is used for the purpose of converting a continuous time signal from the time domain into the frequency domain. That is what we did with the help of a Laplace transform. So, subsequently, a Z transform is used for the purpose of converting a discrete time signal into the frequency domain. But what do you mean by a discrete time signal? So for that, we have to analyze the difference between a continuous time signal and a discrete time signal. So for that, let us consider a particular example. Let us consider that I am driving on the highway. Let's assume that I get inside my car, I start the car and I'm going at the highway at full speed. So imagine that I am a reckless driver. So me being a reckless driver, I slam on the throttle and from zero I go straight away to 100 kilometers an hour over here. So zero to 100 kilometers an hour. And then I see something coming ahead of me, I slam the brakes and then now I reduce the speed to like 60 kilometers an hour, then again I increase my speed, then decrease my speed, again I increase my speed. So what we observe here is that we are getting a signal over here continuously, this is not breaking. At every infinitesimally small period of time we know what velocity I'm traveling with. So here we're getting a continuous signal of the velocity with which me, a reckless driver, is driving on the highway. This is simply what you refer to as a continuous time signal. So for us to be able to convert this particular signal from the time domain onto the frequency domain, that is when we use a Laplace transform. But rather, let us take another scenario over here like this. So here, let us say, I am measuring the velocity with which I was traveling. But rather, let us assume that I am measuring that velocity at discrete time intervals. Let me simplify that for you. So first, at time t is equal to zero, I observe for a fact that I am at rest. My speed is zero kilometers an hour. Next, I will see my speed at say one second. So at one second, I observe for a fact that my speed is say some 40 kilometers an hour. So here I have at t is equal to one, the speed is 40 kilometers an hour. At t is equal to two, let me say my speed is say some 60 kilometers an hour. So 60 kilometers an hour. At t is equal to say three, let me assume that my speed is say 80 kilometers an hour. So 80 kilometers an hour. At time t is equal to say four, let us assume that I have reached 100 kilometers an hour. So 100 kilometers an hour. A four second car, a car that reaches from zero to 100 in four seconds. I must be driving a BMW M5 competition CS. Just kidding. So here, what we observe is for the fact that for each discrete time intervals, we obtain the velocity. That is, at time t is equal to one second, the velocity is 40 kilometers an hour. At time t is equal to two seconds, the speed or the velocity is 60 kilometers an hour. At time t is equal to three, the velocity is 80 kilometers an hour. And at time t is equal to four, the velocity is 100 kilometers an hour. So here, let us assume that I want to know what velocity I was traveling with at the time, say, 1.5 seconds. I won't be able to know that. But in the case of a continuous time signal, I can just plot this over here and obtain the velocity with which I was traveling at say 1.5 seconds. So this thus is simply what you refer to as a discrete time signal. That is for each discrete time intervals, we are getting a particular value. So for the purpose of converting such kind of a discrete signal from the time domain onto the frequency domain, that is when we use a Z transform. So if we have a discrete time signal and if we have to convert this particular signal from the time domain onto the frequency domain, we simply use a particular transform referred to as the Z transform. This is a discrete time signal. But rather, if I had to convert a continuous time signal from the time domain to the frequency domain, that was when we used the Laplace transform. This is what we used all this while. Till module number five, we used to observe and analyze 
standardized and used continuous time signals and hence we used to use Laplace transform. And now we are going to deal with discrete time signal and hence we have to use the Z transform for the purpose of converting this from the time domain onto the frequency domain. This is simply what you refer to as a discrete time signal and this is why we use a Z transform. So now let us dig a bit more deeper onto what you refer to as a Z transform. So let us consider a discrete time signal given by X of N. So if that is the case then if we take the Z transform of X of N we would get capital X of Z. That is we are now converting this particular discrete time signal from the time domain onto the frequency domain. Where here this particular X of Z is given as X of Z is equal to summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n into z raised to minus n where this z is nothing but z is equal to r into e raised to j omega that is x of z is nothing but this is equal to summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity small x of n into r e raised to j omega the whole raised to minus n. So this is simply how you find the z transform of a particular discrete time signal. And now correspondingly if we have the frequency domain signal that is x of z and now if we have to obtain the discrete time signal from it we can use the inverse z transform formula that is given by x of n is equal to 1 by 2 pi j integral x of z into z ratio minus 1 dz. As simple as that guys. So this is the z transform and this is the inverse z transform. As simple as that guys. This thus briefly sums up the Z transform that we use for the purpose of converting a discrete time signal from the time domain onto the frequency domain. As simple as that guys. There's nothing more to it. This thus is simply what you refer to as Z transform and how we use Z transforms to convert a particular discrete time signal from the time domain onto the frequency domain. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. So I hope you guys now have clear understanding of what you refer to as Z transforms and discrete time signals. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. You'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.